Hello everybody, this is Stranger Gamer back for the concluding round of Group H. Ooh, we're, we're almost done with the group stage. Wow, this has really flown by, hasn't it? <laughs> I remember when I started this tournament and we're almost, well, we're, we're already past the halfway mark, but we're almost done with the group stage, which is basically the longest part of the tournament. But to be honest, the most fun, in, in my opinion, so you get to see everyone in action. Some critical matches in this group to come. Starting off with Lepoke going up against MEJP10. Only a 3 0 win will give Lepoke a slight glimmer of hope of getting out of this. A win will take MEJP10 safely through to the last 32 as well. Seven points will not be enough for fourth. The second matchup sees Dinosaur Queen 777 taking on Blood Moon. And last but not least, a clash at the top between Lawrence Steele and Danex Tactop. So yeah, plenty to play for you, and I should point out that first place in this group is could be essential because if you're in second place, then you've got to go up against Dino Smash in the last 32, and if you're in and if you finish and if they finish third, they got to take on Heady. So finishing top in this group could be essential to get a quote-unquote easier matchup. But enough jibber jabbering about that. Let's get on with the first matchup, shall we? Which, as I said, is MEGP10 going up against Lepoke. I mean, realistically, Lepoke is out. I mean, a free, even a 3 0 win may not be enough. Because there's so many people on eight, in fourth place on eight points already. And as it stands, by the look of things, it looks like you're going to have to take part in like a little playoff match. Just to get, just to get through to the last 32 so I can narrow it down. So I'll have to figure something out, won't I? <laughs> But anyway, in the blue corner for MEJP10, it is up for Kentrosaurus. MEJP10 has really stepped up in this tournament, in comparison to the last tournament where they sucked. But they've really stepped up this time, and they have a fighting chance of getting out of the group, which I would say is a much better, well, a much better tournament campaign than they had last time. Ooh, just the start they want. Wow, it's been absolute insanity, isn't it? Like, three, three matches, three tournament videos, every, like a day. Every other day has been absolutely crazy. Tell you what else is crazy. This start from MEJP10. Two crits on the back. Well, in a row, I should say. And I think, yeah, th I think this is safe to say that Lepoke's not going to get a 3 0 win. Well, at least they get a crit, and it's a magma blast, so this crit is going to do a lot of damage to the Kentro. Boosh! So Lepoke does strike back. Impressive. Shippy, shippy, shippy. Yeah, there it is. The tie bombs are gonna go, and that is Lepoke done. Oh, it's kind of a shame for Lepoke. They did it didn't quite happen for them this time. But they can still finish their tournament on a high. So yeah, Lepoke's done. Seven you know, it was always gonna be a long shot. And sadly, it proved a bit too long for Lepoke to pull back. The damage was done in the earlier rounds with all those defeats. Ooh, now it's all on MEGP10. Can they get the points they need to get through? Oof, well, um, well, it'd take them to eight points, but... See, that'll be the complicated thing, because they'll be above Blood Moon, because they beat Blood Moon. But they'll be below Danix Tactile, because they lost to them. No, wait, no, they beat Blood Moon and Danix Tactile. So they'll be above the two of them, actually, yeah. Just thought of that. <laughs> oh, just, that was, oh, we'll just have to see. That'll only happen if, if it, this match ends in a draw, or Lepoke wins, and Emmy gets a losing bonus point. Well, it's been an even match so far, so a draw could happen. The Ceratops coming in. Can 
Let me GB10 get this done. Oh, as a tie. I think this pentaceratops is definitely tie type. So tie stay for the penta. Oh, definitely. Ooh. Has any turned the, the screw on this match? Boosh. Maybe. Ooh, the dino illusion has been triggered. However, the Sejuan is a one kill away from being killed. Well, one tie away from being killed, I should say. However, that light recovery is going to change that. The Pope not going out without a fight. Got the Dino Illusion protection. I'd say even, even though the Pentaceratops has a bit more health left, the Dino Illusion is going to stop Emmy from getting that hit off. No, now Emmy's in the lead. Not for long, though. Wow, wow, this has been a really even match. Just when I thought Emmy pulls away, the poke strikes back. Although, it is Emmy that has the 2 1 lead. Boosh! A win here would really put pressure on Blood Moon and Danix Tactile. Right then, as for the Pope's third dino, it is the Apatosaurus. The secret version, of course. Um, I thought this thing would do would fare better than it has, if I'm honest. But there we are. Maybe maybe the Apatosaurus will do well in this matchup. You never know. Better get my notes up as well, because I just realised there's a super dino in this match. I need to make sure I get the awaken mode right. Ooh, tie. Yeah, look at that. Loads of damage. Another tie. Ah, but the Apathosaurus is tie defense type, so Emmy won't be dealing damage with ties, but we'll deal some damage with this crit. Boosh. And has secured the losing bonus point. But that makes things interesting, doesn't it? Ooh, but it won't be a bonus point win for Emmy. The Apatosaurus taking out the pen. Oh, now things get confusing. Yeah, but I do remember that Emmy beat Dan at Tackle in the first round. And I think they beat Blood Moon as well, so they'll go above the pair of them. Who are currently on 8 points, so Emmy will race to second place. Regardless of what happens. Right then, as for Emmy's third dino, it is a Baryonyx, a Super Barry, Super Duper Barry. Well, to a degree, it's job done for Emmy GP10, providing that Blood Moon and Danix Tactile get defeated. Of course, they'll ideally want to win. Ooh, good hit from the Barry, though. Double check the Awaken Moon is on. Three. Okay, yeah, I think that's going to do it. I think that's job done for MEGP10. And there it is. There's the win. Lepoke sadly going out of the tournament. Didn't quite happen for them this time, but it's a crucial win for MEGP10. And that shakes things up, definitely. Right, let's have a look at the table and move on to our second match. Now that I'm looking at that, I, f I actually think Blood Moon is in a lot of trouble here because uh, they ideally needed Emmy to get beaten and they haven't, then they've won. But, and why I think Blood Moon's in a bit of trouble is because Dinosaur Queen has the type advantage over his whole team. So this ma next matchup he is, I'd say, really stacked in Dinosaur Queen's favour. So she has a really good chance of getting the win that she needs to go into the top three. And that would knock Blood Moon into fifth. So I think this next matchup is going to be crucial. Blood Moon really needs to get something out of this game to keep his tournament hopes alive. But it's going to be tough. So let's not dilly dally. Let's get on with that match. Ooh, we're in the Alpha Arena. Right, as for in the red corner for Dinosaur Queen, it is Super Minus, the Alpha Super Minus. 
this Super Minus will have to take advantage over Blood Moon's first Dino. So if that Futaba Cannon activates, it's going to do significant damage. However, in the blue corner for Blood Moon, we got a T-Rex. And if ever you needed the T-Rex to step up, it was this matchup. I will say, even though this T-Rex has a type disadvantage, it is Futaba Cannon. So... Dinosaur Queen needs to get a hit before that thing gets triggered, and the type advantage applies, so there is a saving grace for Bullet Moon here. And this T-Rex does have a lot of power to it, so there is a saving grace for Blood Moon in this matchup. But I feel like how he does in this matchup will all hinder on how well the T-Rex does. And well, with a start like that, I think Blood Moon's gonna do well in this match. Couldn't have asked for a better start. Remember, all Blood Moon really needs is a losing bonus point, and they should, and that should be them set to go through to the last 32. Although, given Emmy's result earlier, Blood Moon really needs to win, to be honest. Oh, that's a tie. Wow, what a start from Blood Moon. Just the start they would have prayed for. Another tie. And the Suko goes down. Type advantage, type disadvantage or not, the T-Rex is a mighty specimen and gives Blood Moon a 1-0 lead. Right, as for Dinosaur Queen's second dino, it is Super Taurosaurus. Can't she strike back here? She still has the Awaken Mode to use on this thing. So, you know, she can easily get back in it. Lightning Strike! Well, this is going to do damage. Lightning Strike coming in to rip the T-Rex a new one. Oh wow, almost dead. Oh, well, there goes T-Rex. But, in fairness to it, it did its work. But, quick as a wink, Dinosaur Queen even in the score. And now has the upper hand again. Oh, Blood Moon had to make this pay. Had to get off a crit there. But didn't. Right, as for Blood Moon's second I know it is a Baryonyx, which again, has a tight disadvantage against the Taurosaurus, so yeah, Blood Moon's in trouble. Well, first off, he needs to stop Lightning Strike. Otherwise, well, uh, Dinosaur Queen's gonna win this match. Okay, that's good. That's good for Blood Moon, a crit. It's an Aqua Whip, it won't do much damage, but it'll do damage. And he stopped the Lightning Strike. Oh, that's quite good, actually. Very respectable, respectable damage there from the Barry, I have to admit. Okay, that's twice, so next round it is Wait Wait Tuck. Wow! Can Blood Moon do it? Tight disadvantage or not, they're definitely putting up a fight. But, this could be where the match swings back in Dinosaur Queen's favour. Oh, that's a tie! But she won't mind that. Chip away at that Barry's HP. Oh, gets the hit! And the recovery to come. Has that swung this match's momentum? Dinosaur Queen's way. Oh, wow, look at that. Well, it loses half that anyway. <laughs> kind of a pointless recovery, to be honest. Ooh, Dinosaur Queen in the lead. Has Blood Moon lost his match's momentum? Right, Dino number three for Blood Moon is Eucharaptor, which has basically done nothing but die. But it's gonna have to do some work here if Blood Moon wants to get out of this group. Well, one hit and the Taurosaurus is dead. Can Blood Moon secure that hit? Indeed he does! Ooh, risked it for the biscuit there, Dinosaur Queen. Well, had nothing to lose, really. Going for Lightning Strike? Right then. Well, gotta give Blood Moon his credit, yeah? He's really put up a fight. Can he secure a losing bonus point, which would give him a good fighting chance again out of this group? 
Well, again, he needs to win, really, because Emmy won earlier. But, you know, a losing bonus point is better than nothing. And given the matchup, I think a losing bonus point would be a good result for Blood Moon. Well, Mayfly coming in. Can Dinosaur Queen, is Dinosaur Queen in trouble? Oh, almost secured. Okay, yeah, that does it. Blood Moon gets the bonus point he needs. Now, can he win this? Look at this from Blood Moon. Almost there. Can he do it? Ooh. Maybe not. Oh, Dino Illusion's been triggered. Okay, yeah, Blood Moon's won. Like, Dinosaur Queen needs two hits to kill this Euclid Raptor without taking any damage. One to get rid of the Dino Illusion and one to kill the Euclid Raptor. Yeah, there it is. Unfortunately for Dinosaur Queen, the tie is not going to be enough. The losing bonus point is not enough and Blood Moon pulls it off. Well, to be honest, I would have been shocked if Blood Moon didn't get out of this group, given the start he made as well. Right, let's have a look at our table, and that does change everything again. Well, by virtue of the fact that Blood Moon beat Lauren in the first matchup, he is now top of Group H. How quickly things can change. As for Dinosaur Queen 777, it just, she just couldn't get it, couldn't get it done. Desperately unlucky, well... Kind of disappointed, really. He had the type of advantage over his whole team, and you still lost. So yeah, it's kind of disappointing, really. Should have, could have, really, should have really got the job done. But as for Blood Moon, a vital win that is, a vital win to keep him in the tournament and secure safe passage to the last 32. And as it stands, we'll be playing against some a team that finishes fourth. Of course, all that can change if Lauren gets any form of points. Right, how quickly can this table change? If Danex Tactile wins and Lauren gets a losing bonus point, Lauren will top Group H, Danex Tactile will be in second and Blood Moon will drop to third and then Emmy will go into fourth. It's so tight, this group. So tight. I don't know now. I feel like Danex Tactile might actually win this group. If he wins and... Well, if he wins and Lauren doesn't get a losing bonus point, then I'm in a bit of a pickle because... I can't separate them purely because Danex Tactile beat Blood Moon. Blood Moon beat Lauren. Actually, no, yeah, I can. Of course I can. Because Danex Tactile would have beaten Lauren and Blood Moon. And then Blood Moon would have beaten Lauren. So Lauren would be in third, Blood Moon would be in second, and Danex Tactile would be top. Uh, what, what am I on about? What am I on about? Right. Let's not dilly dally. Let's get on with this matchup. Right then, as for Danex Tactile, in the red corner, we have Uru Titan on a sunset beach, which is quite fitting because the sun is almost setting on the group stage. Just one more round, well, one more group to go, and that's group I. But anyway, we're still on group H. Do you not smash? Skip. Right, as for Lauren Steele in the blue corner, we got super para 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 Yes, this thing has definitely been impressive in this tournament. And it probably has done the most work out of Florence's team. I mean, the Carnotaurus has done... Well, it did It did get the win against Dinosaur Queen last time out, but it hasn't really done that much. Oh, it's Dino... Well, that would have been a dream start for Danex Tactile, but the Dino Stuffer said no. Okay, that's once. Oop, that's a tie. Both of our combatants got green impulse. Ooh, it's the power bar getting the first hit. And the forward whip as well. Good start from Lauren Steele. Boosh. Twice. Ooh, but the Ubi Red Titan strikes back. Will we get to see some Nature's Blessing? Indeed we will. And as 
Ghost's gonna need it, cause it's wait, wait time. Oh, is it time? Wow, no green impulse though. Quite surprised. Will we see it this time? No! I am genuinely surprised. And after all that, Danix Tactile gets the hit. How vital could that be? Well, nature's black. Well, it's going to even things up anyway, so not that vital. <laughs> but it, it stops Lauren going into a 1 0 beat. Oop, that's another tie. Well, I'm surprised. We've not seen a single green impulse. Oh, here we go. Who's got it off? Is Para Para. Lauren still getting a 1 0 lead. The green impulse coming in, because, you know, she didn't get it off when it, the power was in the awake mode and had double the technique. But at least he got it off, and well, that's going to do nothing, because the Ulura Titan is dead. Oh my god, look at his jaw, it's like destroyed. Right then, as for Danix Tactile's second dino, it is Yangchungasaurus. Will Yangchungasaurus finish off Para, or will Para extend Lauren's lead? No, I think this Yang Chung Asaurus will, will finish off Para Para. Because it has been pretty impressive for Danix Tactile so far in this tournament. A very solid addition to his team. Yeah, there it is. The Burning Dash should get triggered as well. Right there. Now for Lauren's second Dino years, where Danix Tactile could turn the screw on this match. Because it is Carnotaurus which has the tight disadvantage against the Yang. It's a yin yang, yin 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 yang yang. <laughs> Remember, the winner of this match goes top, well, finishes top of Group H, which is where you want to be to avoid clashes with Dino Smash and Heady. Yep, the burning dash has been triggered. Ooh, it's a tie. Ties will favour Yang Chunosaurus though, it's charge type. Ooh, but that will favour Lauren. It's Ninja Attack Time. Well, this is still going to do some damage, even with the type disadvantage. Because this Kano is Attack Type. Wow. Even with the type disadvantage, it did so much damage. Well, so much for Yang Chungasaurus to turn in this match in Darnex Tactile's favour. Because so far, it's the Carnotaurus fearing that. Although, the Yang Chungasaurus does get off a hit. Tiebreaker will come in as well to stop the Carnotaurus dealing damage in turns. So the Yang Chungasaurus can continue to chip away. But it will not be chipping away anymore because the Yang Chungasaurus is going down. And Lauren Steele has a 2-1 lead. Remember, all Lauren needs is a losing bonus point to secure top spot. Forgot to mention that. <laughs> Right, now for Danex Tactile's third dino, which is Brontokins, and we all know what Brontokins can do, and in fact, I think this is the first tournament that I've done with someone has actually used Brontokins, and not just someone, more than one person has used Brontokins, which I'm really surprised about. Because Brontokins is a beast, and I suspect whenever I do my next tournament, God knows when that's going to be, I suspect we'll see more Brontokins. Oh! Has that changed everything? Well, this is going to take half the health of Brontekin's 100%, so... The losing bonus point, I think, has just been secured. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, well, there's an Aqua Vortex. That should kill the Carnotaurus, so I will not be finishing with a bonus point win. But... She's already guaranteed top spot anyway, so doesn't really matter now. Of course, Danix Tactile is on 8 points, so he, he does need to get something out of this game to avoid a possible playoff with the other guys on 8 points. And I thought that Aqua Vortex would kill the car, but apparently not. Okay, as for Lauren's third and final dino, it is Therizinosaurus. One hit will do it for Lauren. 
But, damn it, Fractal would ideally like a losing bonus point to put him to 9 points, which, again, as I said, would take him above the 8 point threshold, which all the other peeps seem to be stuck on. So, as I said, it would avoid a possible playoff. Nope, there it is. Brotherkins is gone. Oh, it hasn't! It survived! I thought it was curtain for Brontherkins, but apparently not. Okay, now it's curtain for Brontherkins. Lauren Steele finishing the group stage in style. Four wins in a row, going into the knockout rounds. Wow. As for Danex Tactile, well, they're just going to have to have a nervous wait now to see what will happen to the fourth place teams because again he's on eight points i think alpha troopers on eight points the thunderstorms on eight points and i think someone else is on eight points so they're gonna have to take part in a playoff right i'll have a look at the table and we'll end the session well that is how group h finishes ladies and gentlemen lauren deservingly topping group h there with 14 points four wins one defeat two bonus points Blood Moon in second place on 11 points, 3 wins, 2 losses, and that extra bonus point, which puts him in second place. Of course, second place means that he's going to he's gonna be taking on Dino Smash in the last 32, but it'll be MEJP10 in third place that I'll have a showdown with Heady. But I will give Emmy some credit, considering how bad they did last time, I think they done really well to get out of the group. A very loud helicopter just flew out, so I don't know if you can hear it. I don't know if you can hear that, but yeah, very loud helicopter distracted me. But yes, got to give Emmy some credit there. You know, they've really stepped up this time. The fact that they, they were knocked out at the group stage last time and finished bottom with like no point. But massive improvement. Got to say, massive improvement. Will it, will they, well, again, they will probably get beaten by Heady in the last 32, if I'm honest. But the fact that they got out of the group in comparison to how, how they did last time, I think they can be happy with that. They can be really happy with how they've done. And in a really tough group as well. Because I feel like this group has been the group of death, in my opinion. Like, look at Lepoke. Lepoke is out. They've only got one win. And they, they were in the top eight last time. And, well, these two got out of the group and fared pretty well in the tour, in my last tournament. And they're both out. And, Dan, well, Danex Tactile was undefeated in the group stage in my last tournament. And he only won two matches. So yeah, this has been a this has been a brutal group. So I think the fact that these three have got these four have got out of it. Well, we don't know about Danix Tactile. They might still get knocked out because they're on eight points. But the fact that these three are through, big achievement for them three. I think they can be really happy with how they've done. But yeah, that is Group H, ladies and gentlemen. Now then, stay tuned for next time where the group stage concludes with Group I. And until next time, this is Stranger Gamer signing out.